In the world of art, political turmoil can sometimes provide inspiration. In Mexico, the echoes of revolution 100 years ago can be seen in the work of a contemporary artist. Mexico City native Joaquin Segura weaves history and social commentary into his work. NPR correspondent Lulu Garcia Navarro has his story. Her report, report is part of our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. Where you might see the black bars of a heavily redacted document outlined in red and black to show where the shrouded words would be, Mexican artist Joaquin Segura sees a tapestry. I mean, it's almost like Rothko. Or... For his latest collection, Segura found inspiration in a series of once top secret documents, thousands of pages of declassified U.S. government files about the CIA's involvement in the 1973 coup that brought Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet to power. So this is actually the cover letter, the cover page of the daily brief that Richard Nixon received on the morning of the military coup, it's September 11, 1973. Segura's art takes found objects and transforms them, like this display of the tattered flags of powerful nations called G8 for the international gathering that brings them together. Or these blown-up images of leaders from China, the Soviet Union, and Germany with discount price tags playing on the notion of a marketplace of ideas where political theories and the people who sell them rise and fall in value. But his art has a common theme, his view that the powerful only serve themselves and how real change can only come from the hands of the people. When art becomes political, it really becomes a very important tool. Mauricio Galguera is his longtime gallery representative in Mexico. He really manages to uh, resonate all these uh, happenings in our local uh, societies into things that are going on all around the world. So in the end, his work really speaks about uh, human nature. Some of Segura's work explores the relationship between the United States and its neighbor to the south. America has a long history of intervening in Latin American affairs, including those in Segura's own country. It's something he tackles head-on in some of his pieces, like this 2014 statue called Notes on Mexico. The stack of pages are how the sculpture got its name. Notes on Mexico was a book written in 1822 by J.R. Poinsett. He became the first U.S. ambassador to Mexico, but his meddling in local politics got him expelled. This stone had a previous life, too. It was used to protest the outcome of the 2012 Mexican presidential election. These materials were used as projectiles by the people in demonstrations, specifically against the election of the Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto. Peña Nieto's party was accused of vote buying, which sent protesters into the streets. One of the reasons I do art is to come to terms with everything that's happening, not only in Mexico, but in the world at the moment. Now there is a new leader in power from an opposing party. But for Segura, the political affiliation is irrelevant. He doesn't think things will get better because of politicians. Then, you know, corruption in Mexico, it's so ingrained in our everyday institutions and structures that, uh, again, it's something that we often overlook. Segura's political views were shaped by his parents, who witnessed the 1968 massacre in Mexico City, where hundreds of students were gunned down during protests around the Olympics. The event is seared into Mexico's collective memory, the dead still honored in annual demonstrations. In 2014, another mass killing drew Mexicans back into the streets in response to the disappearance of 43 students who had been on their way to a protest in Mexico City. Their bodies were never found, and Mexico's attorney general insisted all had been incinerated. But an independent report later dismissed that explanation, calling it scientifically impossible. Segura's piece, Pyre, forces viewers to contemplate the scale that would require, seen here in a San Francisco showing. You need 760 kilograms of wood, 23 car tires, and 71 liters of gasoline just to disappear one single body. It's not probable. Mexico is still trying to uncover the truth behind those 43 murders. Late last year, after taking office, the new president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, created a new commission to investigate. Oh. Segura's skepticism of any leader's ability to solve this or any other national problems has not made him cynical, though. He's devoted to helping the next generation of Mexican artists through a two-year training program. There's something that we are not satisfied with, 
and we are working every day to make that different. He's advising one of his mentees, Yolanda Benalba, on a video installation, the culmination of her two-year training with Segura. For Segura, the payoff is about much more than simply launching careers. Does it make you feel hopeful about the future? I think hope is also a very heavy word. And, uh, so, uh, but yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to see a different Mexico. Segura knows that history in Mexico sometimes repeats itself, but he's committed to changing its future. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lulu Garcia Navarro.